Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Building Drawing 202. In this episode, we will look at drawing stiffener details. Okay, so what is a stiffener? A stiffener is basically a column. But the reason why they call it a stiffener is due to the fact that this special type of column in the building is flush with the wall. Meaning, once the wall has been rendered and painted, you will not know that a stiffener is there. And basically, in a building, a stiffener is used to join walls that are meeting at an angle. In some cases, stiffeners are used in walls that have a certain length for example if a wall for example the the length of this portion of the wall is 19 feet or 5700 millimeters 5.7 meters once the wall spans past a certain length it is recommended to have a stiffener in the wall okay there are many different types of stiffeners that can be used depending on the angle that the wall is um, meeting and so forth. The walls are meeting and so forth. But there are three main types. You, you have the, let me see if all three types are on this building. Um, yes, you have the T stiffener, which is right here. You have the I stiffener, which is right here. And you also have, have the L stiffener. Okay, so I'm just going to look at those. So they are basically columns that are built flush with into the wall. And they basically trans they help to transmit loads from upper portions of the building. For example, on top of the walls and the stiffeners, um, the beam the belt beam is sitting and the belt beam normally supports either a slab for an, a roof or a slab for an upper floor or a slab for a timber roof okay so this these stiffeners in, adi in addition to the load bearing walls that they are a part of they transmit the load from the the up the parts of the structure that is uh, that is above it to the foundation okay so from the foundation from the inception of the foundation the stiffeners are the stiffener layout is designed and as you look on on this foundation plan you will realize that there's a stiffener everywhere where the walls are connected so this wall meets this wall and there's a stiffener here right so what i'm going to demonstrate today is how to draw these stiffeners i'm going to also briefly explain how do you decide which stiffener goes where okay so let's begin normally the well not normally the stiffener is it shares the same thickness as the wall that it is a part of for example all these walls are 400 millimeters right uh, therefore the, the the width of the stiffener is for is 150 millimeters um i think i may have said 450 millimeters a while ago 150 millimeters that's the thickness of the wall and as such the stiffeners are 150 millimeters so that they flush they are flush with the wall now the length of the stiffener may vary uh, let me start off by drawing the simplest stiffener, which is the eye stiffener. I have an image here, which I'm going to explain before I start drawing. Now, this stiffener here, this is the stiffener. It consists of four steel bars that are going vertically upwards. Right? And as you can see in the description, number four represents the number of stiffener, um, steel bars that vertical steel bars that make up the stiffener so you have one here two here three here and four here then next you have the diameter of the stiffener so this is what should have been here 
um, the diameter symbol okay so each of the steel bars in the stiffener is four is 12 millimeter in diameter or half inch in diameter and they refer to it as a me as means mild steel bar this is this stands for mild steel bar you have different types of steel bars that um that are stronger than this you have some stronger than this so it is made of mild steel okay uh and if you notice in the next line it says with three eighths of an inch links normally you would put the metric equivalent approximately nine some persons write ten it's nine point something millimeters links and the by by the links it's re it's referring to well let me rephrase this you refer to these special links as stirrups and these stirrups are horizontal and they are made from nine millimeter steel bars meaning the steel bars are nine millimeters in diameter let me put the diameter symbol again so what they do is you cut the steel bar the nine millimeter steel bar and you wrap it you turn it into a, this rectangular form and if you notice it you, you, this is the this goes all the way and then you wrap it around okay so they they make them in rectangular forms then they place them over the four main steel bars and right beside here you're seeing the distance that they are apart from each other so for example you have the, you have the four steel bars going up hold on give me a minute four steel bars you have let's say uh, let me let me change my angle here oh it's it's, uh, it's where i want it this is two steel bars you have two more going upwards you would have the stirrup wrapping around it like this then at every 200 millimeters based on what is stated in the description you have another one then another one then another one going up so this is how the steel the steel bars are laid out and this is placed wherever their stiffener should be right so once these are laid in the foundation and once these are installed in the foundation um, the what they do is once the wall is being built they leave the space and in that space you would have the steel bars going upwards then they would use formwork to cover the space and they would pour concrete in the on the steel bars then they remove the formwork after this the concrete dries and in the third line they are telling you the concrete mix the proportion of the materials in the concrete mix as we know that concrete is made from cement sand gravel and water or cement fine aggregates coarse aggregates and water so this ratio is showing the ratio of materials excluding the water the water depends on the, the, the slump that you want or how workable you want the mix to be so you have one this first number represents cement the second number represents sand this third number represents gravel they are in order of particle size so the cement contains the smallest particle size then the sand then the gravel so in this specific mix it's saying that for every bucket of cement for example um you have two buckets of sand four buckets of gravel if you're measuring with a wheelbarrow for every wheelbarrow of cement two wheelbarrows of sand four wheelbarrows of gravel so one to two to four that's the proportion so regardless of what you're measuring with once you have twice the amount of sand than cement in the mix or four four times the amount of gravel as cement in the mix which is twice the amount of sand then you are good to go so this is the full description of the of what is in here 
I could have simply just used the first line to describe this T bar. Then I could have just used another arrow to point on this, the stirrup, and give it the description in the second line. It doesn't matter how you do it. Or if you notice, there are two more descriptions that are here. These vertical steel bars that are going up in the, I think I explained this in the previous video. Same thing applies. I explained this in the previous video um, for, the for the foundation footing detail. You have vertical steel bars that are going up and you also have horizontal steel bars that are going up at every three row according to this description it says every 600 millimeters 200 millimeters is equal to a, a row of blocks because a row of blocks is 200 millimeters high so over here now you would have two stirrups so you have one here and you have another here and the same rule will apply they go they go upwards they are spaced 200 millimeters they don't have to be it depends on the spacing that you want it can also be 250, it can also be 300, it can be 150. It depends on what is required for that specific building. In this instance, you have an L stiffener and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steel bars. So this is the only thing that is changed in the description. Everything else remains the same for this particular building. If you notice the size, the length here is 300 millimeters. This particular length can vary this particular length will be the thickness of the wall the width rather so this 300 millimeter it can vary depends on the circumstance but you normally want to keep it standard which is 300 and then the 150 will be the thickness of the wall 150 millimeters that is over here now everything remains the same in terms of the descriptions except the fact that there are now 10 steel bars that are going up vertically and you have now three stiffeners so this come this this is like you have three high stiffeners merging together this is like you are you have two high stiffeners one is facing vertically and one is horizontal okay let's go ahead and draw this stiffener let's start with the high stiffener i may not draw all three but once I draw the first one, you get the concept of drawing the other two. And if you notice, I have drawn some blocks here. You don't have to. You can just simply use the hatch that represents concrete block wall. So let me start off. So I'm going to draw a line. Long enough in length. Let me change my layer. And I'm going to offset this line, the thickness of the wall, which is the thickness of the stiffener. Then I'm going to draw a line from the center. I want it to be centered. So 150 from this side, 150 from this side. It doesn't matter as long as the distance between this line and this line is 300 millimeters. Okay, after doing that, I'm going to draw a zigzag line here. And this is showing that the wall is continuing. This is showing continuity. All right, then I can go ahead and trim this. Then I can put this over this side. Okay, now we are ready to draw the steel bars inside. So I'm going to offset 25 millimeters. Then I'm going to choose a suitable filly radius. No, this filly radius doesn't doesn't is not specific. In the real life, once you bend the steel, it will assume its radius. So you don't have to specify a radius. You don't have to use a specific radius here. Just use a suitable enough radius to indicate that the steel bar is bending, and it will indicate that it is overlapping. So I'm drawing some random lines here. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to select. I normally do this in its own layer. So I'm going to over properties. 
spell it line weight let me look for line weight I'm going to use this line weight I'm also this is the syrup so I normally draw these first then I'm going to draw a circle and this circle will represent one steel bar that is going up vertically I'm going to hatch this steel bar using a solid hatch then I'm going to mirror this I could have just copied it but I wanted it I want it to be somewhat symmetrical then I'm mirroring this you can just copy them if you want and bring them across individually now this is the representing the stir up this is representing the main bar okay we're almost done we're supposed to draw a line that is representing the horizontal steel bar and then we're supposed to copy we can copy one of this one of these steel bars to represent the vertical steel bars uh, in the wall then this line should be thickened because it's representing the vertical bar in the wall now it's time for hatching so this is what I was talking about you don't have to draw the concrete block that's just for the sake of looking fancy it does a good job in demonstrating exactly what is happening all right so this now I'm going to change this hatch so this I'm going to change this scale let me use 400 and see what happens uh, let me use 300 it's just up to taste all right so that can work this 45 degree hatch with the 45 degree hatch lines it represents concrete block wall all right so i'm going to hatch here normally it provides you with the last hatch that you used so i have to now go ahead and change it this um open the library and i'm going to look for the architectural concrete hatch and this is the hatch that represents concrete oh i'm not seeing other predefined okay so this is it the scale is too large that's why you're not seeing anything let me go to 15 yes all right sometimes you have to play around with the hatch scale to get the hatch the size that you want so this represents concrete the one two four concrete mix and i've completed the drawing the now the next thing that i'm going to do is to put the dimensions and you have to set up your dimensions to the size that you want if you don't quite remember how to set up your dimensions please revisit the video in CAD 101 that explains this we're just going to simply transfer I'm going to just mirror not mirror match the properties of the my dimension line to the ones that I have before makes my life a bit easier you have to now show the thickness of the wall and of this this line this direction okay so it's 150 millimeters thick the width all right so you can select your leader lines uh, I don't I'm not sure if I've set mine up as yet this is the stiffener oh it has been set up good and then you just type nine millimeter I think this this text is too large I want it smaller let's go 60 nine millimeter diameter stirrups at 200 millimeter OC that means from center the center of one to the center of the other All right so let me zoom in and pull this over some more let me zoom in even 
to ensure that I grab the arrow and not the square. And this will happen. I think I'm going to edit my leader style because I'm not so pleased with the arrow size. Or, or, or better yet, let me just do it from properties. The arrowheads are a bit large. Let me use 50 millimeters. And uh, I want the text to be a bit smaller as well. So let me just use. That's a bit better. Alright, so I'm going to now label the main bars, the main four bars. I can just copy this leader and modify the text inside. I'm going to ensure that it's pointing on the circle. Alright. So it's four number four 12 millimeter diameter msd miles d bars and then what you can do also you can write the concrete mix in one, two, four concrete mix. And I'm using the short form of concrete that is done in construction. Um, you can also describe the vertical steel bars. So these are 12 millimeters diameter ver vertical steel bars. And the distance 400 millimeters apart. Since a block is a part, it is it not, not apparently, it's 400 millimeters in length, the bars are it is best to have the bars that distance so that every other block wall receives a steel bar running through it every other hole in the block rather and then you can have another one I have enough at the top I can put one at the bottom and this will be pointing at this the, the horizontal steel bar so uh, all I have to do is change this to horizontal and then change the distance 600 which is every three cores and this is it the only thing that is left is to do the labeling and I detail detail I think I want this text to be a bit smaller let's go 100 all right that, that works then now I'll put the scale normally you put these 1 into 10 or 1 into 15 1 into 20 1 into 25 in that vicinity I'll underline here and I'll let me this text smaller and this is it this is one you can draw the other you can draw it from scratch or you can just modify this one all right so you would basically do this draw the L you are offsetting 150 Then you're going to trim, then you're going to measure 150, 150, you can now offset 25, that's the cover for steel bars 
that are not in the ground well some of it is in the ground but it will eventually come out of the ground and then the PD radius of course and then of course you do this then of course it should have the thickness then of course the bar, the bar, the vertical bar alright, and this is what you can do, once you draw this you can now mirror it to this side so uh, let's do that again and if you notice how many bars are there I can I can delete one of these all right good so there's one two three four five six seven vertical bars and you can draw this from scratch or if you have drawn the eye stiffen already just take this can put it here and rotate it or you can just draw it from scratch it's up to you I like the easier way then you would do something like you would draw one bar here and another here these are the vertical bars Then you put the vertical bar. So these are the horizontal bars. These these are the vertical bars. And this drawing is complete in terms of the layout. Then you hatch this. Sometimes the hatch will might not want to show so you have to do it over all right I'm going to now hatch in here I need to, to match the properties so that it is the right symbol now you can go ahead and label this based on the pictures that I show you here you are supposed to know how to label it okay Alright, so this is how you draw the L stiffener. Um, I'm going to show you how to draw the T stiffener. I could have just simply copied this from here to here, but I just wanted to demonstrate it. Alright, so T stiffener. a line here I'm going to shift this line to 75 which is half of 150 so that I can use the center to shift a further one, se one um, 75 I want this to be centered it doesn't have to look centered it doesn't matter but you know you have the zigzag line here and here And here to show that there's continuity. Alright. And for the in the interest of time I'll do it. I'll copy this. Then I'll copy this portion and mirror it. Find a center point. If you notice, there are 10 steel bars there now. And then I'll just I 
should have drawn the skew bars the horizontal skew bars it's a bird's eye view so these bars are horizontal then the vertical skew bars so let's put one here one here and put one here Then put one here if it's 400 millimeters away. Depends on how long you draw this thing. So this is 400 millimeters. And it, let's do this over some more. So it simulates it more realistically. Okay. So you can now go ahead and label this and this. So this is the format that it takes. You can now observe these to see the info on it. So please go ahead and practice. This is stiffener detail one, two, and three, or you can label it I stiffener detail, L stiffener detail, T stiffener detail. All right, there are other stiffener details such as Y stiffener detail. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, once you know how to draw these, it is your route to draw the rest. All right. So I hope you guys learned what was taught here, and I hope you guys are able to apply it to real life situations for example if the wa block wall is thicker naturally the stiffener would be thicker and if it's a case where you are using the stiffener um, in a basement you may need to have it um, thicker thicker blocks thicker steel um, bars the main bars could be 12 um, 16 millimeters in diameter as opposed to 12 and the stirrups could be 12 millimeters as opposed to 9 millimeters. And you can even increase the concrete, the strength of the concrete mix. So it all depends. All right. So that's it. I hope you guys learned what was taught here. Please like, subscribe, and share the knowledge. Have a good day.